Hi everyone, I'm Josh with Northern Frogger and in this video I want to update you on all my geckos. I recently got another Madagascar giant day gecko so I want to show you that guy and talk a bit about uh, why I got another one and update you on uh, kind of that whole breeding project. And I also wanted to update you on Toffee's progress. Um, if you missed that video, Toffee is my new crested gecko. Uh, she's still pretty tiny but growing fast so I actually want to get a weight for her. Um, so I'm trying to keep track of her growth progress here so I'm going to do that today and uh, show you how she's doing. And I also wanted to uh, show you my new uh, baby morning gecko. Uh, my morning geckos are starting to reproduce uh, successfully here. So I've got a tiny little baby morning gecko. Uh, so I've got some good footage of her um, hunting some fruit flies. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys that. And uh, I think at the very end of it, as a little bonus, I'm going to uh, feed my smooth-sided toad. Um, so we get some footage of him uh, crushing some crickets as well. Um, so the first thing I actually want to do here is uh, mix up some uh, Rapashi Bug Burger uh, so I can start uh, getting those crickets gut loaded uh, for a feeding later today. Um, so I'll start with that. So for this Bug Burger here, uh, it's pretty simple. Just follow the instructions on the side here. It's just one part powder and three parts water. Mix it together really well and then just toss it in the microwave until it just starts to boil. Uh, pull it out, mix it up again. And once that's cooled down, I'll just uh, get a couple pieces here to throw in with the crickets and uh, put the rest in a Ziploc bag to store in the fridge uh, to be able to use later. Uh, so I'll come back to that later. Um, I don't think I'm going to be feeding the geckos any crickets today. Um, I'm a little low on crickets um, and I need to save some for the toad. So uh, the geckos are mostly just going to be getting the uh, Penji gecko diet today. Um, so if you've been following my channel for a long time, uh, you probably know all this, but um, to all the new people here, I'll just catch you up on the uh, kind of story behind the geckos here. Um, this one right here was my original gecko. I got her a couple years ago um, as a full grown adult. Um, and it was pretty obvious she was female. Uh, there's no femoral pores at all. Um, so that one was really easy. Um, but my intention was to always kind of try and uh, breed these guys. So eventually I tracked down um, what the seller said was a male uh, of these guys. He was still like really young, uh, pretty tiny at the time. Uh, but I ended up trading some uh, dart frogs for him. And I had never had day geckos before, um, so I didn't really know um, how to sex them other than what I had kind of read online, um, which basically said that the males would have uh, the row of femoral pores. After doing some more reading about how to sex them, um, it says that the males will have uh, the well-developed femoral pores and then the females will have no pores or weak pores. And that's kind of what was throwing me off is that the second gecko here actually does have some weak femoral pores. I mean, kind of see here that there is definitely a an extra line of pores here that the original female doesn't have. Um, they were always kind of weak, but originally I thought that was just because he was young um, and that they would kind of become more developed as he got older. But yeah, after doing some more reading, I kind of came to the conclusion uh, that this girl was actually a female. Uh, so I started looking for another male. Um, and then I actually found one at uh, the Pisces Pet Emporium in Calgary here. Um, it's actually the same place I got the original one. Um, so I got this, this male right here, which is a really gorgeous male. Um, tons of red. I really like the patterning on him and uh, he's even got um, a little bit of blue tint um, in a few spots too which is interesting. And as you can see here uh, this guy's definitely got uh, the well-developed femoral pores so um, this one's 100% male so we should be ready to do some breeding here now. I'm still not quite sure what I want to do. They're going to be going into this tank right here uh, so this will be even more space. The one that the two females are in right now is like a 55 gallon uh, corner aquarium. And I think I'm going to try initially at least uh, putting all three of them together in this bigger tank. Um, I've kind of heard mixed things about it from what I read online. Some people don't recommend trying to keep trios um, and other people said it, it works okay for them. So uh, I think the plan right now is to try uh, with all three of them initially. I want to get it all built up first so I can introduce all three of them together. Uh, just so that none of them have a chance to establish a territory or anything beforehand, which will hopefully cut down on some aggression. Uh, but the plan is to do it uh, where I can really watch them and keep an eye on them for the first couple days. Um, so if there is too much aggression going on, I can try and separate one. And yeah, so hopefully we can get some uh, breeding activity out of this trio here. Um, I'll separate them if I have to and then figure out what to do with the odd one out if I end up with just two of them kind of bonding together. Not sure what I would do um, if I would try to sell one of the females or just keep her separately. Kind of attached to both of the females. I've had both of them for quite a while now. The newer one's got 
a bit nicer uh, coloring with like the red, more red on her back and on her head. Uh, whereas the original one like barely has any red at all, just these couple tiny spots. Uh, mostly just solid green uh, but I really like this original one because she is by far the tamest out of the three as you can see here uh, she's eating the gecko diet right off of my finger uh, which the other two will not do at all if I if I put my hands in there uh, they don't want to be anywhere near it they will go uh, run away and try to hide somewhere but yeah we'll cross that bridge when we come to it now uh, the plan is to try and keep all three of them together um, if possible uh, but yeah, that basically gets you guys all updated on the day gecko situation. Um, so now I want to move on to the morning gecko. Um, I've got this tiny little uh, baby morning gecko here. Um, a month or so old now at this point. I'm actually not exactly sure how old she was. Um, if you remember, originally I had my morning geckos uh, with a pair of my Azurius. Ended up moving those out of there a while ago um, and putting them in my girlfriend's uh, big vivarium. Then a few weeks after I had moved those guys out, um, I was feeding the dart frogs and I see a little bit of movement up in one of the top corners and I look closer and there was a tiny little baby morning gecko. Uh, hiding in the leaves there. They must have had a hidden egg in there somewhere that hatched successfully and uh, that baby had been living in there for a little while. Um, it actually took a while to be able to uh, catch her out of there. She's pretty sneaky and would run back into the leaves every time I try to open the door but I uh, eventually got her um, and I've just been raising her in this little deli cup ever since. Um, I actually need to uh, change this paper towel out at the bottom so I'm going to do that here. She's starting to calm down a little bit. I've been working with her quite a bit, uh, but she's still a little bit flighty and she's very fast. So I'm just gonna try to transfer her into another container here. And then I can pull her stuff out, uh, clean out the deli cup and put some clean paper towels in the bottom. Um, I mist these down, uh, keep them just kind of damp uh, to make sure she has enough humidity to be able to shed. And then I just have a piece of cork bark and a little piece of this philodendron in there um, just to give her some area to climb on and to hide. Uh, but yeah, she's doing really well. Uh, hopefully we'll have more. Um, I actually got this shot just a couple days ago. You clearly see some eggs uh, visible inside of her belly here. Uh, so I assume she's going to be laying uh, right away. Uh, but yeah, I kind of wanted to update you on that uh, baby morning gecko. Moving on to the last gecko, I guess. Uh, this is Toffee. Uh, this is my crested gecko. Um, I got her back in January and uh, she was just tiny at the time as you can see here. And uh, so we'll try and get her on the scale here if she'll cooperate and uh, see what she's up to now. Um, so it's kind of bouncing around here between uh, 4 grams and 4.1 grams. Um, so I think I'm just going to call it uh, 4 grams for now. Uh, so she has about doubled in size almost uh, since I got her. Uh, so everything seems good with that. And I uh, just give you a quick sneak preview here of her new enclosure uh, that's almost finished. Uh, this is the first time I've ever used the dry lock method uh, for a background. Uh, it turned out pretty well. I did have a couple issues with it uh, kind of cracking as it dried, but I think I figured that out. Um, there will be a dedicated build video out on this coming soon. Uh, but yeah, I think that uh, basically does it for the toffee update here. She's doing really well. And I'll talk a bit more about her in her uh, Bavarian build video as well. Uh, but yeah, that basically uh, is gonna do it for all the gecko updates. And uh, so just finish off here uh, with some of my smooth sided toad. Uh, this is Sir Anthony Hopkins, uh, just eating crickets. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Uh, if you could take a second to like and subscribe, uh, that would really help me out as well. Or if you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, or suggestions for future videos, uh, let me know down in the comments there. And until next time, happy frogging.